Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Almost done with summer here, aren't we? Well, I guess technically it is over. It's officially fall. So here we are with the last garden tour, kind of the last garden tour of the year. The last garden tour where all the tropicals and all the annuals and all those things are going to be out here. The month of October is when I start to have to pull things and prep for winter time. And before I even get going, I need to preface this. I always forget and it ends up being like five minutes into the video. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, St. Louis, smack dab in the middle of the US. All the tropicals go into the garage during the winter time in the house, or I have a service out here that will come and pick up all the really big things and take those for the winter. If it's in the ground, it stays in the ground with the exception of a croton that's down there and you're probably not gonna be able to see it because the lighting of this tent of here is just absolutely horrible. The angle of the sun makes for really sharp, jagged shadows. I've been waiting to film this for a cloudy day, but it just isn't happening. Oh, and to avoid any confusion, that big Alexander palm back there, I love that palm tree. That's in a pot, so it might look like it's in the ground, but it's not. And then the same thing with there's a queen palm tucked in over there. It's still in a pot. So the croton, the queen palm, and that big one, those all, they all go inside during the winter. Everything else that's in the ground stays in the ground. And, okay, there's going to be some weeds. Don't know how that happened. Well, that really got out of control, didn't it? I've developed uh, maybe what you could call a bad habit of turning my garden tours into when I also go through and weed my garden. I should probably do that beforehand, shouldn't I? Well, that's okay, weeds happen. I want to try and make this garden tour as inclusive to all the plants as I can. Sometimes it's hard to remember to include the house plants with the perennials and whatnot. So I'm gonna do my best to touch on everything. September has been a very, very, very dry month here. And it's started to show on some of the plants, like the honeysuckle. I mean, it's fine, but it doesn't look great. Been watering as much as I can, but you know, everything that's out here, if it's a tough plant, I haven't been worrying about it too much. The hydrangeas are still holding on and doing strong. They are actually starting to color out earlier than normal. Usually these will stay looking good into about mid-October, but now they're getting all dry and crispy. But I'm okay with that actually, because I had mentioned this particular paniculata, it's a vanilla strawberry hydrangea, it got pruned way too heavily last spring and it just, ugh, it looks horrible. I say it got pruned, <laughs> like I'm passing that bucket off to someone else. It was me, I did it. I cut it back way, way, way too far and now it's all weepy and sad looking. So if the flower's starting to dry off a little bit earlier, that's okay because I'm pretty sure I'm going to give this a cut this fall instead of waiting until March because the you're only supposed to trim these back by about a third. I don't want to do more than that. And this has got about a 50% cut in the springtime. So the problem that I've created here, long-term problem, is that if I only cut a third, that's right about here, somewhere in there. So all the growth next year would be coming out, all the new growth is gonna shoot out from there. It's just gonna perpetuate the problem even further. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut back a third right now and then in the springtime see how it's looking and cut back some more and that's partially to avoid it being too terribly weepy next year and because i don't want all this new wood here that's going to harden off this winter time i don't want it to harden off all sad and wilty the way it is right now the strawberry vanilla hydrangeas do have a more wilty habit to them they have gigantic panicle flower heads on them and that's why they tend to do this no matter how you prune them it's just this season, <laughs> the flop has been much more extreme than usual. The majority of the newer types won't flop like this. This is just a characteristic of old panicle hydrangeas. But the flowers on this one are just one of my favorites. And look at them, aren't they beautiful? They start off that gorgeous white color when they first start to emerge sometime around July and then they age out with a little bit of green and that beautiful pink that surrounds everything. And that does make them appear to almost glow. I absolutely love this hydrangea, but it's not one of the prettiest as far as growth form goes, but I'm okay with that. But again, that's okay, because you know they're still pretty. Over here, this is an area that I forget to talk about an awful lot. This is where I have a lot of shade loving plants. I have the Ruby Spice Clethras over here that are waiting to go into the ground. 
and that should be happening here in a couple of weeks. The spot where they're going up plants it up with a lot of annuals and it was so hot when I picked these up that I was like, I'm just gonna stick them in the shade. They're getting hit by drip over here so that way I don't have to worry about them. There's not much to look at with these right now. They're just chilling. <laughs> Back here, I have a whole bunch of pothos that have been doing very well. There's a marble queen and a snow queen in there and then over here, yes, right there, yeah. And then a Manjula pothos over here. The Manjula is one of my favorite pothos. I think the variegation on it is just stunning. The leaves are a little bit more stout and stiff. I don't see it offered for sale very often, which I don't understand. I know the Pearls and Jade has become a very popular one, which does have a similar appearance to the Manjula, but the Manjula is, it's more glossy. And just the variegation on it's way better. I mean, look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. It's been doing its thing. I have all kinds of pothos creeping and crawling and growing over the rocks over here. They seem happy. Begonia maculata. This is the whitey eye. Looking great. This one's a couple feet tall, so I need to get that repotted before I take it inside and probably give it a heavy prune. This one, it's been in flower for like, I want to say maybe six to eight weeks. This one's been putting out flowers for months. It has loved being out here. Typically we grow the whitey eyes for their foliage, but look at those flowers. They're really pretty. They have that beautiful blush pink up top that goes all white down below. It's a lovely, lovely begonia. Good lord, these really are going all over the place. I hadn't noticed they've had these clethras sitting in front of them for a little while, but okay, all right. Those would probably appreciate a repop before I take them inside. Something to add to the list. Does anybody recognize this one? I haven't given updates on this one in, I, I actually I don't know if I have. This is a melanochrysum cutting that I had down here because I just didn't feel that it had rooted in enough to give it much more light. But now that I look back on it, I think that this little plant probably would have appreciated a spot with more filtered light this summer and probably would have gotten a lot more growth out of it. But it's been happy. It's been throwing out leaves left and right, but they're just tiny little shade loving leaves so another plant that i should probably go ahead and repot and make sure to give it some more light but it's doing well same thing with the pink princess which is a plant that i have debated getting rid of over and over and over again because it just it doesn't do much for me and it's constantly reverting but it also just keeps growing without me having to do very much of anything with it so i'm just like okay you can stay if it were a plant that i had to constantly fidget with then that wouldn't be the case but it's easy to take care of I'm not going to try and get rid of it the anthurium back here look at it look at it got those beautiful flowers on it I don't know the name of this one it's just an anthurium with absolutely beautiful glossy pink flowers Taniki ficus elastica doing well over here same with these little variegated alocasia odoros these are okinawa silvers divisions that I took from my larger plant not too terribly long ago and they've just been hanging out over here adding some color to the space I have a trio star down here <laughs> underneath the glider not the most ideal spot for it but it's been doing well so and if it's gonna do well and i'm not having to do much with it it's usually when i'll decide that i'll just go ahead and keep the plant in that spot it seems happy so why mess with it coconut orchid nothing going on with it this time of year other than just growing looking pretty and graceful and fun to look at this is the succulent arrangement that got done by arrangement, I mean more of a, I had too many succulents and I didn't want all the little pots around, so I just stuffed them all together into a seashell planter. This is, it's doing well. Not a ton to change with it, because I don't have this in a spot that gets a lot of light, at least not this time of year, but everything's doing well, taking root, and starting to fill out nicely. Pedicits, which normally look absolutely beautiful. This is the time of year where they start to fizzle out, start to die back, and they just, well, they don't look as pretty. That's just kind of how it goes with them because they go through the heat of the summer and they start to just bleh, get really sad and wilty looking. And I don't cut them back. I just let them die back on their own. But this year I may go through and start pruning back on them a little bit early just because I need to get access to this area to do some other things. But for now, it's fine. They still look nice where they haven't started to fizzle out yet. The laurel hedge. Well, not much has happened with it since the last garden tour, but it still makes me happy looking at it. Love my wall of shiny green leaves. And the queen palm, just being a queen palm, not much to say about that one. But this spot down here where all the impatience were planted, it's been doing great. I mentioned that they didn't get their mid-season cutback because they didn't really get planted until, gosh, I think it was late June, early July, which is fine. You can plant them whenever, as long as there's no frost. But normally I get impatience planted up and, you know, 
early to mid-May. So uh, I didn't bother with the mid-season cutback. And that's the same with some of the other impatience I'll be showing here in a little bit. So some of them are starting to finish out. They'll go into a rest phase, like you can see right here. And it doesn't really matter because actually after this tour, I'm going to be pulling pretty much all of these up because I need to get this area ready for planting perennials this fall. And time to get some perennials in the ground. I did absolutely love 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 how this came out though it's just a beautiful rainbow of effortless color that could be seen from pretty much anywhere on the patio i mean as long as you weren't blocked by a giant planter of elephant ears or something like that you know what i mean it just popped it was cheap and easy low maintenance and low fuss that's why i love impatience but yeah in about a week or so it's going to be time to go ahead and pull these out and get this area prepped because we need to get those perennials in the ground for next year so this was that beautiful begonia <laughs> <laughs> that I've showed in the other tours, uh, the puppy ripped it out of the ground. I'd say it's the only plant casualty with him. I don't think he's gotten to anything else. He was running from the grass onto the patio and just without even skipping a beat, he just grabbed it in his mouth and kept going. <laughs> just because it was there. He's a puppy and they like to put things in their mouths. It's all right, not the end of the world. I can go ahead and root these pieces up. I don't know uh, how well that's going to go for next year though, because this is a begonia, it's a perennial that dies down and has winter dormancy. So it might be too late to root very much of it. Still think it'll be okay. Hopefully the plant will come back from roots next year. If not, I can order a new one. The worst things could happen. It's worth it to have the dog. These are so pretty. The other thing with the impatience that I should have mentioned was that I had considered just leaving these as they are because typically when I have impatience planted up in a large mass like this in a big, big drift, normally they'll reseed next year. So you just wait until like June when it gets nice and warm and then this spot would just be absolutely full of seedlings. The problem with that is in the springtime, this area will also be full of little weeds that are popping up and emerging from all over the place. And the whole spot's gonna be constantly having hands in there pulling those. Because of that, I just have a feeling that the seedlings wouldn't end up coming up very full because there'd be lots of other things being pulled up or I'd use the burn out on them and then they would die. Like I said, I need to get them out of here to get some other things put in here. The Ruby Spice Clethers that I showed back there, those are going to be going over here as well as some gingers and maybe some more clethers if I can find them. Oh, and the tree fern. I forget to talk about this plant all the time. I don't understand why because I have plenty to say about it, mostly just that this plant's always been a pain in my butt. No, not really. Actually, last year I repotted this into a mix that held on to some more moisture and still drained quickly, but it was really moisture retentive. And then I put this up on drip this year with lots and lots and lots of drip line that spools around in there twice. So it's getting really nice, even coverage. And it's been doing pretty well with it. I do think I probably could have placed this in a spot that got some more light but I just didn't really have a spot where I wanted to put it other than right here in the shade. And it does get a fairly decent amount of morning light. It looks happy. It's been growing very, very well, but I just think that it probably would have grown just maybe just a smidge bit better with some more light. There's lots of new stuff coming out on it. This plant, I've just accepted it. Always says mealybugs. I go through, I clean them off about every other week. They're always there. There was a time where I was on it every week, but they just, they won't go away. They like this plant. I have a few plants like that that the mealybugs are just drawn to and I I don't just allow the mealybugs to stay there like indefinitely, but I kind of use those as plants sort of like a moth to a flame, you know, or a bug light. Like, okay, mealybugs, y'all go over there. I know where I'm gonna find you. And it has actually helped control them a little bit more doing it that way. They're not anywhere near as spread around as they used to be. It's like, I know where I need to go to stay on top of them. So there's probably a few on there, but it's, not that bad. It's not as bad as it used to be. They can be difficult to get off of a plant like this because of that hairy stem they have. There's a lot of hair and fuzz in there. Lots of places for those mealybugs to hide. When I brought this out in the springtime, it only had like three fronds on it. In the winter, I don't do much with this plant. I put it in a spot in the garage that doesn't get a ton of light and it just hangs out and chills. It has too much of a spread on it. Like, I mean, look at that. It, I don't have many places where I can keep this where it's not going to shade out a ton of other plants. And that's why I just tend to let it hang out elsewhere in the garage on the cool side. It's been doing fine with that. I did underplant it with a bunch of uh, tongue ferns and those have taken off fairly well. These were in a hall in the springtime. 
it's gonna take them a long time to fill in the inside of there, but someday that'll have a nice lush mat on top of it. Fun plants, actually really do enjoy this plant, even though I said it was a pain in the butt. That was more just having to learn the rhythm and the dance, you know, how the plant was going to do with me and how I take care of my plants and trying to make it work as best as I could. And I'm pretty sure I found that sweet spot. Finally, took a long time. The Lespedeza, Lespedeza thumbergii, isn't it? Beautiful. Just cascades of beautiful, dainty pink flowers. And look at them. So lovely. Shades of pink and purple start off that light pink and then as they die, they look purple. Which, how fantastic is that? Instead of the flowers turning brown and drying up, they turn purple. That's a pretty neat characteristic and one that I don't think I mentioned when I did a video about this plant. I did a spotlight on it years ago and I didn't, didn't mention that. That was a big thing to miss out on. I should have mentioned that in that video because what a great characteristic for a plant to have. No fragrance, but still absolutely lovely. Doesn't need it. It's a pollinator attractor. Brings them in from all over the place. It's an easy to grow plant. I just cut it back in the fall and then it regrows and does all of this again every single year. Pretty and easy. What's not to love about that? Hibiscus. Hibiscus are doing well. Some of the uh, black coral elephant ears are back here looking nice and shiny and pretty. The Dracaena Draco. Haven't updated on this in a while. There hasn't been much to say. They aren't the fastest of growers, but it's still hanging on doing well having that beautiful trunk isn't that awesome that's the thing i absolutely love about these plants it's not necessarily the foliage it's those trunks they're so neat looking they remind me of something that like you would have seen out of the flintstones kind of cartoony not kind of cartoony very cartoony these are plants that have a lot of character to them especially as they get bigger on the needle palms i never talk about these i've been trying to get better about it so they're doing fine they're just so easy that it's worth another one of those plants that i forget to mention because they just they're always good in the winter time i get nervous if it drops below 10 degrees they can take a lot of cold but i don't want them to because these plants grow like snails so you can see this is their winter damage from last year i could go ahead and get that pruned off at this point they have flushed out with lots and lots and lots of new growth. They flowered in the early summer. They're just like, maybe there's still some here. I don't want to get in too close because they live up to their name. Yeah, you can't really tell. It's just like a little spike of tiny little flowers that come out. Looks neat. It's always exciting when the palm trees flower. But what I was saying is that they grow so incredibly slowly that I just don't like to take the risk of them having very much winter damage. And because of that slow growth, it's not just a setback in how long you've been growing the plant, but cost. I couldn't replace them at this size. The needle palms, they're just really pricey. You can get them from a smaller size, which is what I've done with all of mine for more reasonable prices. But to replace them at the size that these are at right now, I don't think I could even do it. I would need a 25 to 30 gallon plant, maybe a 20 gallon, but those are several hundred dollars once they get this big because they grow like snails. So it takes a long time to get them big enough to sell at that size. It's understandable. It's, that's not just a money thing either. They're plants that I've had for a really long time. So I just want to take good care of them. So as I was saying, they can take a lot of cold. They can go below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I just don't want them to. <laughs> because of those setbacks. It's not hard to throw a couple frost claws over them and plug in some lights. I have lights wrapped around them when it gets that cold and then take it off when it warms back up. That's such an easy thing to do. I, just, I don't know why you wouldn't. There are some people who prefer to not protect them. I don't know, maybe it's for bragging rights, I'm not sure. They've been doing quite well. They have a big spread, putting out the biggest leaves they've ever put out and they're just always good. It's just the winter when I get a little bit nervous. I wanna jinx it, but after last winter, I'd be surprised if we had a winter that was worse than that, that would take them out. Although if they weren't protected with that two weeks below zero degrees that we had, I don't know if they'd be looking this good. Although I do have one that you can't see right now because it's hidden behind a bunch of other plants that was unprotected and did okay, but it is a significantly smaller plant that was purchased at the same time and planted at the same time as these, but it's, I'd say 50% the size because it's never protected. Without the protection, you lose a lot of foliage and then you have to rebound every year instead of being able to start back from a larger size when the spring rolls around. My freaky freak Monstera over here, it's been doing wonderfully. I did have to lift it up and move the pottery around because where it was growing, it was like in direct line of the puppy and I didn't want him to get in there and start chomping on it. So 
Some of the leaves have started to shrink down because it's crawling more than it was climbing and it's not getting as much light, but it still seems perfectly happy. It's growing effortlessly. I'm not having to do anything with it. Then again, just like with the plants I mentioned over there, I just leave it. That's my kind of plant. That's why I love a lot of the Monsteras. They can be so simple to grow. This is the mother plant of that Okinawa silver that I showed down uh, before by the glider. Some gorgeous leaves on it. Isn't it beautiful? This one's a little bit dirty. That's not surprising. Like I said, we have not had very much rain. I think it's only rained twice this month. Which I know in some places that would be considered a lot of rain. For here, it's not. Air is dry. I'm having to put on lotion all the time and like chapstick. I don't, how do you people in dry climates live like this? I don't understand it because the humidity has been low. Well, low, it's like 44, 45%, but I consider that pretty low for this time of year. It has made for some pleasant times outside. The Washingtonia, that lighting was terrible. Yeah, I suppose that's better. So the Washingtonia palm, it has been growing. Just, I mean, the way you would expect from Washingtonia. It is absolutely massive. That's the Mexican fan palm. It, it, I, I'm a little bit concerned. I think it may have gotten too big. What I mean by that is the greenhouse that takes these palm trees, their ceiling is only so high. I won't really know until mid-October if they're going to be able to take it or not. I hope so. I really do. It would probably have been smarter to go something that was like 10 feet shorter, but yeah, it was a gift. So I didn't have a say in the matter. It's still looking beautiful. I never thought I'd say this, but I think it's too big. I mean, with palm trees, that is, you know, always bigger is better, but they have to fit back into the greenhouse. So I don't know, but it's done a lot of growing. It's regular irrigation. When it was planted, I did throw an entire bag of Espoma Biotone starter down in there a bag of wine and seed, no, two bags of wine and seed compost, and uh, uh, almost a full bag of palm gain. So it, it's been loving life. <laughs> and I've been enjoying having it out here. I'm just nervous that they won't be able to take it. Alocasias are doing so well. They're so lush and so full, and I love how the heliconias look in front of them. Oh, okay, another thing. I just remembered an exception to the thing I said at the beginning of the video. So the alocasias, they don't stay in the ground, neither do the heliconias. They all have to be lifted up. Just That's just these two and those right here. I think that that's it. I cut them back and I store them dry and cool during the winter time, plop them back in the ground in the spring and they flush back out. And look nice, the banana cannas, they're banana canning. Actual dust on those leaves. Look at how beautiful their leaves are though. It's like a rainbow. They remind me of the Enset Morelli which are the red obsidian bananas, but, well, they're cold-hardy-ish, to an extent. More cold-hardy than the red obsidian bananas, at least. The bananas are growing. They're all really thirsty right now. It's just that time of day where the sun starts to hit them and they just wilt down, but those will pop back up when the sun gets off of them. The bikini teeny elephant ears, loving them. All those beautiful veins and color. They got really big this year. Like really, really big. Usually they'll spread a lot, but this year they got tall. These are, they're over my head. Not all of them, but those down there are. It's a nice wall of beautiful tropical -y leaves. They die back in the winter, pop right back up in the spring and fill an area out very aggressively, I would say. Very, very, very aggressively. They spread. This is an entire separate area that's far away from the other side, but yep, yep, yep. There they are, didn't plant them there. It's one of those plants where you only need to buy one and you'll have plenty for years to come. Look at the plumeria. It only has two flowers open right now. In my last video, I showed it in its full glory where it had a lot more of the flowers opened on it. I had mentioned maybe in the last garden tour that I had been thinking about maybe getting rid of the plumeria tree because last year when it flowered was the first time that it ever flowered for me and the flowers were like a really dark red and uh, I mean, while they were pretty, that's just not why I'm growing a plumeria. You, you grow plumerias for something a little bit more exciting than just a dark red flower that doesn't have much character to it. But it's a multi-trunk plant and oftentimes when growers do that, the different trunks will have different colored flowers on them, which if I were hoping to get the whole thing to bloom at one time, I would probably be bothered by that. But in this particular circumstance, I'm okay with it because I like the shape of the tree. I think it's a beautiful tree and the flowers are just Stunning. The smell, oh, I was gonna try and describe what it smells like, but it, it smells like pomeria. Kind of jasmine-ish, but not quite. Some weed vines I need to pull. My entire passion vine was all the way up there and we had a storm and the whole thing went <laughs> and came down. So there's a giant pile of passion flowers back there that I need to get cleaned and tidied. 
that's not the end of the world because I have to take that inside during the winter time and I'm going to be cutting it back and putting it onto a trellis anyways. There's the Pharaoh's mask. I'm doing a good amount of growing. I'm going to lift that out of this pot here pretty soon and put it into a separate container. This is the Alexander palm. Goes off to the greenhouse during the winter time and they don't guarantee the plants in the pot. Speaking of the Alexander palm, that has huge, huge, huge inflorescence coming out of it, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because uh, the lighting really sucks right now. The gingers have just started putting on another show. Had a nice big spike open them back up there. These are the Hidichium flaming torches. So that I have them planted right here and then right here and up against this window here. I had talked multiple times, probably to a point where it's annoying <laughs> for a lot of you, but I normally have a succession of blooms with them. At least I always have, but because these were all, I normally have a succession of blooms with them. At least I always have, but because these were all divisions, the majority of them, they didn't have a lot of stocks. Several week show that goes on with them was more like two and a half weeks, which was disappointing, but okay, it's okay. It's what's to be expected with divisions, but back here starting to get more spikes and more blooms, so that secession is still doing its thing. We have two more that are going to start blooming here fairly soon. And then the one over here that I just showed, this beautiful flower on it. Can you get to it? Can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. Nice big flower heads and the hummingbirds go nuts for these gingers. It feels like there's almost always a hummingbird on those gingers. And Bruce State got blown over too. The Sable Miners or the Scrub Palmettos, they're doing well. Put out a fairly decent amount of new growth this year, which was great because this is their first year in the ground. Well, second year. They got planted up last year, went through their first winter, which is one of the worst winters I've ever experienced. At least the month of February was. That's the same for most people, right? Arctic blast, but they pulled through. I had them covered and they did all right. Not much to see right now, but once most of the, I don't want to call them annuals, the tropicals, the gingers and the cannas that are back here, those will all be cut down after the first frost and then those palms will be more noticeable. They're just big fan leaves, but it's nice to have some evergreen interest. And you know, I'm not really one to just like throw a boxwood in the ground for evergreen interest, it's palm trees, right? Not the, actually, I do like a nice boxwood. Those do look nice. Uh, I find the sable miners to be a bit more fitting to what I've been doing over here in this area. So I'm looking forward to getting to see those a little bit more front and center, actually. It's been nice with all the tropicals. The heliconias have filled out this planter with the lemon coral sedum and caladiums wonderfully. That is a very full planter with those heliconias. Sun started to shift angles, so the flowering on them is starting to dwindle somewhat. So I'm kind of... I'm not going to say I'm ready for fall and for that to be through, but if things are going to look just kind of bleh because the lighting's not good anymore, then yeah, they can go. I mean, it's that time of year where things are starting to look more tired. And that's okay. I still like them. still appreciate them. There's lots of beautiful flowers here on that variegated Gartenmeister fuchsia. More bananas that are looking thirsty because, well, they are. <laughs> it's quite warm and the sun is pretty dang intense, so... That's just the way they're going to look to this afternoon. Look at the flower back here on the Bikini Teeny Colocasias. Aeroids, they have some of the coolest flowers on them. I'm always so tempted to unfold these things and look at the inside, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it alone. Holy crud, that smells amazing. My finger just smells amazing after touching this. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. It smells kind of like a gardenia crossed with a little bit of citrus. Like it's really fresh, clean, and sweet. Never noticed that before from the flowers on the alocasias or colocasias. I've had a lot of them flower, but I guess I've just never really gotten in there and sniffed them before. Down here, the drift of the lantanas and the setcrisias or tradescantias, whatever you want to call them, the purple heart plants, they've all been doing really, really well, but I have had the spot <laughs> blocked off here. I didn't want the puppy running through here and grabbing them. So lantana is not good for dogs. I had debated pulling them up, but those pumpkin vines, which were here in the last garden tour, right? Pretty sure they were. Since the last garden tour, I pulled up the pumpkin vines, harvested those pumpkins to open the space back up, and I've really been enjoying having the space opened back up. It's very nice being able to walk through here more easily and having the nice lines and swirls from the garden beds. I very much prefer it this way. With those pumpkin vines being gone, I left this right here because it was just a slight barrier to help keep him out of the garden beds because he was having a great time jumping back here into the croton and he would lay down there and chew on coconuts and things. It was adorable, but just not behavior I wanted to encourage. So this is 
it's been working fine for right now. In a month's time, this will all be gone. Not all of it. The gingers will be cut back to the ground after the first hard frost. And then the same thing with all the helicasias. Those will die back. They're two very large sable miners back here. They got planted up in the springtime. You can barely even see because the impatience got so big, which is great. That's what we want them to do. The sun impatience are gorgeous, right? But again, just like I was saying with that other area, even though I'm bummed about summer being over and that things are going to die back and need to be cut back, there's still going to be more interest out here because I've been trying to add more evergreens. And by evergreens, I mean palm trees, sable palms, needle palms, and um, akubas and those sorts of things. But they don't stand out as much during the summertime when you have all the color with the annuals, which I love. I love my annuals. I just mean I'm not as upset about moving into fall as I usually am because there's still things to look forward to in the garden. Lots of fall planting and color and things to look at. Oh, I just smacked this bee with my hand. Pretty sure he was already like that. I don't know what's going on there. You drunk? Okay, so he's having a day. Croton, big Croton. This is in a, it's, I think it's in a 15 gallon pot. I need to upgrade its pot size. It's great. It's still putting out flowers. Like it's just been shooting out flowers all over the place all summer. This is usually the time of year where I have to start checking these plants very closely for the mealybugs. As the light shifts and things are more dark, that's when they all seem to come out and start looking for the mealybugs and the pests and make sure that I'm staying on top of that so I don't take them in the house or into the grow space for the winter time. That's not normally a problem though because I do do a pretty heavy spray with an insecticidal soap and whatever is necessary as I move the plants inside. I like to wait to do that even though I use things that are pretty safe but it's better when all the flowers are gone. That way you don't have to route over spray. That's also why I usually do my spraying in the driveway and let them sit there for a day before they come inside. It's creeping Jenny. <laughs> Look at how long this is. Look at that. Just keeps going and going and going. Coming out of the very sad looking hanging basket, that has actually improved drastically since I switched up the drip on it. And the dianthus that's in the middle is starting to rebound and the lobularia, the purple one that I was talking about before, in different videos how I was pretty disappointed with it because it's just not the same kind of trooper as the snow princesses the, and the white knight lobularia looking great but they've started to fill back out cooler nights more drip and then the pansies starting to flush back out so I was going to redo this basket but it's turning back into what would be a nice fall container so I'll probably just I'll probably still redo it I think it would be nice to refresh this and it's always fun to get a planter done for the fall and winter time but to me right now the star of the show it's that creeping Jenny. Look at how long that is. It keeps going and going and going. Bird of Paradise, still popping out. New leaves. I have a bunch of plants over here that were repotted in a different video. So this is the Dracaena Limelight. And it really appreciated that repot. Everything I repotted, appreciate it because they were overdue for them. At least they were pretty close to being overdue. All of this right here on that growth and right here, that's all new. So that's just in, what, a week and a half? if even a week and a half, because there's more water available to those roots now, because it very badly needed a new pot, or a larger pot, I should say. I was really hoping that this Mandevilla would be in flower for the tour, but not quite yet. This was the one from Monrovia, and I've lost its tag. I think it was called like Apricot Sunrise. It's actually, I think, one of my favorite Mandevillas I've ever seen. The flowers are stunning, which I probably shouldn't harp on too much because you're not gonna be able to see them, because the flowers haven't opened yet. Hibiscus, that got a big prune and it's looking great. The Pseudoranthemum gave that a heavy prune. Been keeping it in the shade while it, these all adjust to their new conditions. They seem to be doing fine. Same with the mother and daughter croton here. Sorry, the camera works a little bit shaky. I'm trying to work around some tubes and hoses and things that are sitting behind me. The uh, impatience that are in here, I get asked about these in every single video. Right now they look like garbage, they're done the heat yesterday it was like 90 i think the sensor in my backyard said 96 i think the high for st louis is like 92 or 93 but there's a lot of pavement back here so it usually gets hotter these completely wilted down yesterday i watered and watered and watered in the morning so it wouldn't happen but it did which i thought was a little bit odd because they experienced much warmer temperatures than that during the summer although there wasn't as much growth on them at that point was there so that probably has something to do with it but they, again, they didn't get a mid-season cutback either. So they're all long and lanky. Lots of crispy spots in there just from being overgrown and lanky. And just, just yeah, need to get that out of there. That is the Tropical Rose Sun Impatient, which I absolutely love. It's a beautiful plant, but it's starting to get sad and just blech looking. If there was still more growing time left in the season, I would just cut that back. But 
there's not. There's only like, hmm, I don't know, two to four weeks left. So makes sense just go ahead and get it out of there. And that way I can gain better access to the root ball of the Robolini palm to go ahead and do some amending and some things to get it ready for winter time. All of the zinnias up here that got potted up in a different video, they are very happy and thriving. I do need to do some deadheading. It's always a thing keeping up on deadheading. Enjoy deadheading. I like pulling those old flowers off and making them look nice and clean. I just keep forgetting to do it. I think that's largely because with zinnias, you know, they're such low maintenance plants. Like just give them some water, nice soil, and they just do their thing. <laughs> so it's easy to forget to check on them when I know that they're fine. And I don't need to worry about them, but that's something that I will be doing here shortly. Got a few flowers to cut off. Pakistakis lutea in this pot that also got potted up when I did the zinnias. The lollipop plant. How beautiful is this little spot? Those yellow flower racks with that, I believe that's a Royal Cosmos lantana behind it. So pretty. So much color. This spot right here with the Pakistakis lutea, the lantana, and then the heliconias here, and begonias, cupfia. <laughs> More heliconias. The hummingbirds really, really, really enjoy hanging out in the spot. Heliconias, this is an Andromeda. Doing well, it needs a repot fairly badly. It's just not the right time of year for it, so I've been on the fence with what to do about that because they need heat to go into a new container, like a lot of heat. Heliconias like things warm, not necessarily scorching, but they, I should say they don't like things cool. That makes more sense. And we're at a time of year where the lows are starting to dip into the 60s. We had a few nights in the 40s actually a couple weeks ago, but I think 50s and 60s are more common this time of year. Right now for the next week or so, it should be in the 60s and 70s at night. So I guess it would be okay, but really I would prefer for these to have I don't know, at least eight weeks of warmer temperatures. So the repot for this may have to wait. So the risk of rot goes just skyrockets if you get them into a fresh potty mix and the roots stay too wet when the temperatures are cool. So I don't really think it's worth that risk right now. More things need to be deadheaded. The heliconias, even when the flowers start to die off on them, they're still beautiful. Gorgeous seed heads. They're gonna darken up in color somewhat. And you can keep them, hold on to them, plant them, They'll grow more plants. An unnecessary explanation of what seeds do. They grow more plants. This is a pink's dragon wing pink. <laughs> Pink dragon wing begonia, almost a pink's dragon wing begonia. I wasn't positive how it would do in this spot because of the amount of afternoon sun, but did pretty well. You can tell it was getting more light because the leaves are shorter on it. The entire growth habit of the plant is actually more, not necessarily compact, but it's more tidy looking. Dragon wings begonia, sometimes they will come out and just grow at angles and all over the place. Whereas this one, it stayed more bushy and I like it. It looks good. Oh, and the double up pink begonias that I planted and I was like, I'm going to get rid of them. I don't like them. I left them in here partially because I planted them to give them a chance and see if I would like them. And actually now I do like them. I think that the flowers on them are really cute, like little pink pom poms. That's about it though. I don't really see the appeal other than that. The flowers are cute. I think that's about everything for this half of the yard. I'm going to wait till later in the day for the sun to shift and I'll do everything over there on that side. <laughs> We're back many hours later. Don't worry, the water's safe. The sun has shifted. Much more pleasing to the eye. So, I don't remember where I left off. I think I just covered everything that was in the shade over there. Pool planters did great this year. They are packed full and they require a lot of pruning because the leaves are always falling down. But that's not that big of a deal. The petunias did their thing and looked beautiful. Heliconias, they started to kind of put on a show not that much they got a little overcrowded that's going to be changing here pretty soon though because i need to pull the maui gold color cases out that's what these are right here with those cooler nighttime temperatures we had see how the leaves started getting a little and cute i don't hate it it looks nice but they have gotten quite messy what are you doing is it the leaf is that what he's fixating on you got to get the leaf yep that's what it was kangaroo paw fern has been so happy in this spot. I gave it more light this year than I normally do, and it seems to have really appreciated that. It's got lots of fun roots coming out the bottom, and the foliage is that lighter color, which I just assume that that's from the light. So it's been growing really well. I don't think it's a nitrogen issue. It's not patchy, it's just lighter. Excellent ferns, one of my favorite houseplant ferns, because the foliage is so shiny and pretty, and they smell fantastic. I don't know where the smell comes from, but somewhere within these plants, they smell wonderful. Bismarckia palm. There's not a ton to say about it. It's been growing. It seems happy. It's a sturdy plant, doesn't require much attention. Just make sure it gets watered and fertilized and 
just does its thing. The bamboo that I have over here in the planters is looking nice. It's a little bit hard to see. It's somewhat hidden behind some of the other plants, but that's all right. Those will stand out more here in a few weeks as the tropicals get moved inside and then the bamboo will be just the center of attention really because this palm tree is going to be gone too, the queen palm, which has really done some growing. I had to cut a couple fronds off of it because it just, it kept blowing over like the slightest breeze and this thing was poof, back down onto the ground. And that's not safe. That's not good for the palm tree. So I cut a couple of its lower fronds off that needed to go anyways because they were spaced out in a way where the whole plant just, it looked wonky. And I wrapped it up in some chains and got it strapped into the ground. So there's little stakes back here to help hold it in place. I don't know how it's going to work. It's only for a couple of weeks. This is going to be going off to the greenhouse mid-October, but for right now, I'm like, eh, this will do. Next year, I'll do something more, more tidy and without having the Persian shield smash inside of it. That was an interesting project. I had to stand on the wall back there and crouch down behind everything and then partially stand inside of the pot. And it just, it was tricky. It was some weird angles I had to work with, but it got done. But that's why there's some plants stuck in here. Yeah, I'm gonna need to loosen that up to free the Persian shield. Didn't even really realize that I had done that. I just did that this morning. I was just like trying to get it tied up and move on with my day and well, that's what happened. Ficus altissima, looking nice. The variegation's gotten more yellowy than it was before. It was more of like various shades of green, kind of like on this leaf right here, but it did start to yellow out. I don't, I don't like it as much. I still like the plant though. Really simple ficus, very easy to grow. I mean, you don't even have to do much with it. Basically just bring it outside and it's just like, okay, I'll grow. Ginger's looking good. They always look nice when the light starts to hit them. Stromanthe back here, Trio Star. Happy plant, fountains all clean and sparkly. Ugh, I love when this fountain's freshly cleaned. Metanella has been throwing out flowers, bloom spikes left and right. And look at this back here. Look at that pine cone there. But like they're creeping out over the monstera. Actually, the monstera has fallen down on top of the plant, so I need to move that. The Thai, we had a really bad storm a few weeks ago and it knocked this thing off of the pole and I've just been waiting to get back in there. I can kind of put it in a spot where I can't get to it. It's still plenty supported. It's leaning onto some pots and they're holding it upright. It's not going to break or anything like that. It's nice and sturdy. In fact, a little bit safer. It's more protected back there. But it's been pretty happy this summer. It hasn't grown as much as it has in previous years because I repotted this last fall, but it did, I think it threw out three or four new leaves, which is pretty good. The fresh one, that nice shiny one that's opening up back there. Looks like it has some pretty nice variegation on the very end of it. It's hard to see, but yeah, I have to wait for that to develop some more. It's a big leaf though. Well, most of the leaves in this monster are starting to get pretty massive. Gosh, that is so pretty. It's a beautiful plant. I really enjoy seeing this at night. Look how shiny it is with the lights from the lamp up here reflecting down on top of it. Nighttime, such a fun time in the garden, right Turbo? I don't normally let him over here because well, he just Turbos through everything. Dognado's all over the place and knocks plants over. He's been pretty good lately though. Adenidia palm, it's looking great. Look at it. Starting to get that nice like succulent appearance to it. They're not succulent. They, Adenidia palms, when they're watered really well and they get plenty of heat, they get a nice full firm look to them right in the crown shaft. So it's been happy. Haven't had to do a lot with it. Just palm gain and it's on drip. That's about it. Bill Cosmos, Lantana, looking great. Um, <laughs> Turbo, what'd you find? Turbo. He just came running around the corner with an Edenidia palm frond in his mouth. He can have it, it's fine. Normally I don't let him chew on those things that teaches him to chew on the plants, but right now I'll make an exception. Rel Cosmos Lantana, right there, looking beautiful. Spring Fling Caladiums did very well. Love the veining on those and then the Fiesta Caladiums. Also enjoying those. I always intentionally plant white Caladiums in this corner and have the variegated plants in this area because of the light. Having variegated plants around the light sources, they reflect the light back. White and variegated plants. It just brightens the space up. Makes things more noticeable in the evening time. But Stramanthe closes its leaves up at nighttime, but still, you get it. It's all about the color and the contrast. Have that basket grass in here. That has grown so well. And that's what basket grass does, variegated basket grass. It's a plant that offers so much color and texture. They trail over, they cascade, and they stick out, and they just move in the wind and add a nice tranquil element to wherever they're put. 
And it's remembered I need to pull the geraniums out of here and get them into more light. And I have a poinsettia over here that I need to move into the shade and darken that out if I want it to get any color on it for winter time. I was just bent over while filming all of that, so hopefully the audio came out. All right, heliconias. So many heliconias back here. They've all been doing great. Hummingbirds and butterflies I always appreciate the heliconias. The lantana tree, y'all remember this? I had to repot it and I moved it up here on top of this wall and then I never gave any updates. Well, it has grown a ton. I mean, look at it. It's very wild and I'm really looking because I kind of really just let it go. I didn't bother with any pruning. It's leaning, so I need to restake it, but it's been doing very, very well. I mean, it goes all the way from over here to all the way up here down over here it has quite a wide spread on it. this is definitely going to be getting a very very heavy cutback before it comes inside Eureka palm been happy doing well it's been on the road to recovery for a while now, that was a plant i was worried about in the springtime because i thought it maybe had some kind of rot on it i treated it for rot and it bounced back sometimes when you just get the plants out into the sun and just let that heat hit them they can push through some things. Lots of fertilizer and water it helps them move through those issues sometimes. And then the hot tub wall. There's still like a pile of pots over here because it's been doing a good job at keeping the puppy from being able to come over here. I have a lot of forbidden plants over here that I don't want the dog going anywhere near. I have a bunch of perennials that are ready to go into the ground. A lot of them are going where those impatience are. We'll be getting on that here in not too long. The freckles croton. See that? Isn't it beautiful? It's glowing. Y'all know. One of my favorite plants out here. It's just such an easy, no fuss plant. It just grows and grows and grows. It has absolutely beautiful, stunning color on it. And it's so simple. Love a simple plant. More heliconias. I, I really, really got into the heliconias this year because you know they don't normally sell them this far north. When I saw them at Lowe's, I had to get almost all of them and then go to another Lowe's and get almost all of them. And then I may have gone to another Lowe's and bought almost all of them. I think I planted close to 30. Hey, you guys strike while the iron's hot. This, this doesn't happen very often. Probably not going to have the opportunity again, so I'm glad that I did it. The majority of them will be coming inside. Not all of them. So like I said, it, it, there were 30, and I already had some to begin with. So about three dozen heliconias out here. I can't, I don't have space to bring every single one of them in, but I'm going to try my best. Raspberry Moon Caladium. I can't decide if I like it. It's my first time planting this one, and really, I'm not sure if I love it or not. I like some of the leaves, and the ones that are more white and red, I'm not crazy about them. I mean, it's a caladium, so it's beautiful, but it's just maybe not one of my favorites. Oh, the variegated sea hibiscus. Stunner. Fantastic plant. I have really enjoyed growing this this year. Every leaf that pops out, you just never know what you're going to get. Look at that. How cool. Talk about an awesome plant. Who needs a pink princess when you got something like this? Oh, this gets absolutely huge, though. So there's that to consider. They get very, very big. I think that I'm going to repot this before I bring it inside. I know it just got repotted, what, a month or two ago? Something like that. But the container that it's in, it's about... 12 to 14 inches. I really think that I could bump this up into a nice size container, like a 16 to 20 inch pot with a potting mix that would go around there that would hold on to some more moisture. It's, it's a very thirsty plant. It likes a ton of water. I feel like the size of pot that it's in and the potting mix that it's in, it's just going to be uh, maybe tricky to keep it hydrated this winter. I think it'd be smart to go ahead and bump it up into a larger pot where it'll be easier to maintain during the winter time. Uh, the deck planters, only one of them's really visible because the hibiscus is in front of the other so not a lot of growth out of that petunia because it's been blocked by the hibiscus but they both are looking absolutely beautiful these were i think the last planters i did so they haven't been potted up too terribly along with the sun impatience very happy in there supertunia vista bubblegum of course doing great because that's what supertunia vista bubblegum does the color combo is just kind of eh in my opinion they were just the plants that i had around that i had left to do planters with so i just made it work and i'm okay with it but it is a lot of pink None of that really matters. I like how they turned out. Very, very, very full with just a pop of color. Huge pop of color. Coleus, being pretty, being a coleus. I have some more of those Pharaoh's masks over here that I repotted in a video. And they, they're doing much better in this mix. They were in my pond and I didn't like the soil blend they were in. So I pulled them out of the pond and put them into a mix that has a lot of compost in it. And that actually wouldn't drain as well as what it was in, which they've really seemed to appreciate because they just they weren't doing much growing with the mix they had before. I think that was a little bit too sterile for them. Frog in a blender caladiums, always some of my favorites. Just simple white and green variegation. Something about them I find tranquil and just cooling and calming. Not the name, the name is stupid, but everything else about them I love. Hooperiana palm, 
not much to say about that one. It's still just doing its thing. Have some silver dragon uh, alocasias under there. And I think that that's actually everything. Yeah, it is. Oh, need to hop out to the front porch and look at those planters real quick. Those canary wing begonias. Yeah, I can't forget to talk about those. They've been doing wonderfully. I'm actually, I'm going to pull these out, I think probably in a week or two when I start working on the other plants and pot them up. I'd like to take them inside, put them in the grow space, give them a chance and just see how they do. I'll give them a heavy cut back so that they'll branch out because they are, <laughs> they're getting pretty leggy. I've been allowing them to get leggy because I just love the cascade of flowers that they have on them. It's more refined than the just regular dragon wing. I don't know if refined is the right word. It's less erratic. That's probably what I should say. The flowers come out on that really long stem and they dangle in much larger clusters. Whereas with the dragon's wing, which this is a type of dragon wing begonia, but with a typical dragon wing, they do tend to be a little bit more sporadic until they get to be a larger size. And then they'll start to get more pendulous like this. And I feel like they come out in that pendulous habit, that hanging habit more consistently than I get out of just a regular dragon wing. Windmill palms are good. Just hanging out here, very dusty. We just haven't had the rain. So I should probably take the hose and give them a good wash. There's the foxtail palm. Foxtail palm needs a bath too. Not a lot's happened with it. It's been growing. Seems like being out in the front yard. Usually I have it in the back, but I put it here in the springtime and I kind of liked how it looks. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it here. See how it likes it. And it did really, really well. All right. I think that's about everything. I'm sure I forgot something. It's been a nice year for gardening. This one looks like this because that queen palm I was showing you kept falling over and that's where it landed. I'm not concerned about it. Those colocasias grow quickly in a week or so. Won't even be noticeable and I'm going to have to pull them out anyways in a week or so. So eh, not the end of the world. See the dragon wings, how they do have that pendulous flower on them, but it's just not as heavy of a concentration of flowers. That's all I was saying. Don't know why I had so much trouble making that point. Thanks for hanging out. It's been fun. There'll be more garden tours, but they'll be more like looking back at the year kind of garden tours. This is the last look as far as garden tours are concerned, where all the palm trees and the tropicals are going to be out here. End of October, things look pretty different out here. And then come November, it's like night and day difference. The, it's been nice. I enjoyed this year. There's lots of good stuff happening in the garden. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing, baby. Oh, I didn't update. The Prince of Orange, Philodendron, doing well. The Gloriosum and some of the other houseplants are going to get repotted. They'll be in a video soon, but I can't get to them right now. Bye-bye. <laughs>